Boo! Are you ready for the Halloween special? So last week I posted a question and asked you guys what you wanted me to make and the most overwhelming response was something for Halloween. And I remembered I got given this hand casting kit and it was ideally given to us so me and Nicole could hold our hands together and dip it in the mould and make a plaster cast of it. But I pitched my creepy hand idea to Nicole last night and she was happy for me to use this to make a video for you guys. So basically this kit comes with a couple of bags of moulding powder and a couple of bags of casting stone. Now we won't be needing the casting stone so we'll leave that behind, but I will need to read these instructions. So it's saying I need to use 3 litres of cold water for these two bags, but I don't think I'm going to need both. Since this kit's designed to do 3-4 to four hands at once, I reckon I'll get away with just using one bag. So it looks like once we start mixing, we don't have a lot of time. It says I've got one minute. It'll start off with a dark pink, then go light pink, and then it'll be white when it's set. It says here I've got to very quickly mix the powder on turbo speed using a bar mix. I don't have a bar mix. I think I'll take a gamble and just use a normal whisk. Gee, I like the way they put all this one minute stuff in red. One minute, one minute, you've only got one minute. Important. It's kind of making me nervous. So my thought is to go for a creepy zombie looking hand. What do you guys think? I've been searching around for a container and this is about the only one I can find. So it could be a bit of a tight fit, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. You know, it smells very much like that same alginate that I used when I cast Molly's paw. I don't even know if this is really gonna work, to be honest. You know what? I've got a horrible feeling that I'm gonna have to mix this with the water in a separate bucket because there ain't no way I'm gonna put one and a half liters of water in there. All right, change of plan. I'm gonna put the powder in the bigger bucket. Okay, so my plan is I've got one and a half liters of cold water. I'm gonna pour it into this larger bucket, whisk the crap out of it, and then pour it into the smaller one and dunk my hand in. And I gotta do that all within a minute. I also grabbed myself a wooden spoon. I thought it might be easier to start mixing with this, then I'll switch over to the whisk. It says here if you use another bucket for mixing, make sure you allow enough time to pour it back into the DIY bucket and you'll need another person to hold the bucket while you quickly scrape it in for use. I'm home by myself. Well, here goes nothing. Wish me luck. God, it's been 16 seconds and I've only just gotten the water in. No, I've got to go, I've got to go. Here we go, creepy hand. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. oh, not this. It. It's a minute ten, it's not setting. It is going lighter. Something's not right. Two and a half minutes and it still hasn't set. What a lie. My hand's cramping. It still doesn't feel set. I mean, it's definitely firm, but it doesn't feel set. Not enough to where I can pull my hand out anyway. I think I might just leave it in till the five minute mark, just to be sure. Well, that's five minutes. Definitely feels set. Look at that. I got a bit close to the sidewall there. Now I gotta try and get my hand out. Oh, I did it. Check out how cool that looks. There's a couple of things I'm worried about before I go pouring this resin in. The first thing, the mold is very wet. 
and I'm worried that that moisture is gonna creep into the resin and basically ruin it. The other thing is my hand come very close to the side here and it's made the mold very thin on one side. So we could have a disaster there too. I'm in two minds what to do now. I'm not sure whether to let this dry overnight and maybe some of the moisture will evaporate away or grab a hairdryer and try and dry most of the moisture. I'm just not sure. Guess what I'll be replacing. So because I'm impatient, I'm gonna go with the hairdryer and see if we can just dry this out a little bit. That actually works surprisingly well. The resin I'll be using for this cast is one that I've never tried before. It's called Rivercast by Just Resin. Now they sent me this test sample to try. I'm not sure if Rivercast will be the final name or whether they'll call it Deepcast, but this particular resin has a low exothermic reaction so you can do deeper pours with it. My plan was to make three hands because I've got three different colors of this glow in the dark powder, but I don't think that mold's gonna hold up to three different casts, so I need to choose which one I'm gonna use. Now I'm not too sure which one will have the creepiest effect, but I do kinda like the blue one. Because this resin's mixed at a ratio of two to one, I'm just gonna take one of my paint mixing cups. It's got the ratios printed on the side here, and that'll make it a lot easier to get it right. I'm not sure what the pot life is on this one, but I'd say I've got a fair bit of time. If I had to have a guess, I'd say easily 30, 40 minutes. I'm not too worried if I get bubbles in this mixture. I won't be putting this one in the pressure pot and I think bubbles will give the hand a cool look. I'm not too sure how much of this glow powder I'm gonna need, but I do know that I want a nice bright effect. So I'm definitely gonna use a fair bit. Let's just have a quick look at our consistency before we pour it in. I think that looks pretty good. I did mix up 400 mils. I don't think that's gonna be enough to do the full cast, but we'll pour it in and see how far we get. If you wanna try any of Just Resin's products for yourself, I'll leave a link to their website in the description. You can also grab yourself a 10% discount by using code word BENZWORKS10. So all that's left now is to put this to one side and let it cure. I have no idea how long that's gonna take. I'll keep checking on it every three to four hours and see how it goes. So it's been about an hour since I casted this. I thought I'd check in and see what the temp's like. So it looks like we're about 50 degrees Celsius. Or about 115, 116 Fahrenheit. It's been 24 hours. It looks like this is cured. So let's try and take it out of the mold. I think I'm just gonna break away this alginate, see what we got. Check that out. Wow, that looks cool. I'm really happy with that. I think it turned out really good. I did get one little air pocket on the back here, but apart from that, it's a pretty nice casting. It kind of looks like a hand coming out of the grave. Now I'm just gonna give it a bit of a clean up and try and get some of this alginate off, and then we'll start thinking about how we're gonna display it. So I'll give my hand a bit of a wash, it's all nice and clean now, I've got most of the alginate off. It's looking pretty good. And I've also had to think about what I wanna do for the base. I've decided I'm gonna take a piece of plywood and I'm gonna mount the hand on top. And then I'm gonna take some of this decoration moss and put it around the hand. I also grabbed some dirt from the front yard. That way it looks like the hand's coming out of the ground. So the first thing I need to do is take some five minute epoxy and glue this hand down. I think while I got a bit of excess epoxy, I might spread some dirt around the base. Just to lock it all in, I'm just gonna run around with some UV resin. That 
That's starting to look pretty cool. Now I'm going to add some moss. I feel like this is going to be one of those projects where you could spend hours just playing around with it until you get the right look. So I think what I might do is I might turn the camera off, play around with it for a bit, then I'll check back in when I feel like I've made some progress. And just like that, what was two seconds for you was about an hour for me. All I've got left to do is this back little bit here and I'm running out of moss. You can see here that I scraped up all these little pieces. I've even got all the little bits I dropped on the ground. And that's all I've got left. So I'm going to have to sparingly put it on the back here. But apart from that, I think it's looking pretty good. So I've finished gluing the moss on. I think it looks pretty good. There's one more thing I want to do, and that's spread a bit more dirt around the base of the hand. But apart from that, I think we're pretty much finished. I think that looks much better. What do you reckon? Now I'm going to let this sit for a couple of hours and just let everything cure. While that's curing, I've decided I want the hand to be holding something. So I found myself an eyeball. Now all I have to do is modify it to make it look creepy. So pretty much like everything else I make, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I got myself some gel medium, some lip gloss, some UV resin, some candy red ink, and some cotton balls. So hopefully with all this, we can make a creepy looking eye. I think the first step is going to be just dyeing some of these cotton balls red. I think I might try that again with some water. So I'm thinking maybe something like that for the tendons and nerves and all that kind of stuff that hangs off the back of your eyeball. I think that looks alright. Now I'm going to add some of this lip gloss around the outside. Check that out. Now we're starting to look creepy. Now I'm going to try and attach these tendons somehow. We'll try a bit of UV resin and see if that'll hold it down. I think that's not looking too bad at all. But what I might do now is I might mount it into the hand. That way I can play with it while it's fixed in position. I'm just going to have to try and wedge it in there somehow. That's not looking too bad at all. I'll probably go around now and touch up some of these white bits, get a bit more fake blood, have it dripping down his hand. Then I think we're done. That's the effect we're going for. So everything I use there will dry, including this lip gloss. So all I'm going to do now is put it to one side, let it dry, and then we'll check it out. Remember how I added all that glow powder? Let's see how it looks. That actually looks really nice. It's a nice even glow too. Imagine this sitting in your front garden at night. That'd freak out all your neighbours. So because I'm never really satisfied, I was just taking the thumbnail for this video and I really feel like I want the eye to glow. So I'm just going to mix up some glow powder with some UV resin and I'm just going to paint the eyeball. Let's see if that works. That didn't turn out too bad. At least the eye glows now and you can make it out in the dark. Well guys, what did you think of this one? I reckon it looks nice and creepy. Definitely looks like a hand coming out of the grave. I'm so glad I decided to have it holding something. My first thought was to put a bone in there, but then when I realized I had an eyeball, I was like, wow, this is gonna be awesome. And even though I had no idea how to make this eyeball look creepy, I think I did a pretty good job. Now, if I wanted to make a cast that was absolutely perfect, you definitely got to use a silicon mold, but I didn't have any silicon on hand and I had the alginate, so I figured I'd take the gamble. I knew that the alginate would leave a few imperfections, but I was quite happy with that because I did want that zombie look. And I even liked the way it left like a white residue on there because it definitely looks creepy. 
Well, that's all for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. And a big thanks to everyone who suggested I make something for Halloween, because this one's for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.